Welcome back to the Naked Proverbs podcast, where we unclothe the truth about black love, family, and marriage. My name is Nick Scott, one of your hosts, and I'm here with my husband. What's going on? It's your boy, Rich. And today we're going to talk about the love languages. Right at the start of every episode, we always remind our listeners that we are not trained, licensed, or professional therapists or counselors. We've been married for almost two decades, and we use Naked Proverbs as our platform to share our experience, our stories, our advice, and as always, our opinions. If you haven't already, make sure that you're following the Naked Proverbs on whatever podcasting platform you are listening on. And if you like what you hear, because I know there's a lot of Apple users out there, take a moment to give us a five-star rating and leave us a review on iTunes. As we do each week, we would like to take a moment and say thank you to all of our listeners. We truly appreciate you tuning in. And also, I'd like to have a little shout out to all of our people that have been tuning in on YouTube yeah we did not realize that we actually have a following it's not large yet but we have a following on youtube and we appreciate your love and your support thank y'all when you just be sitting at home all day working from home and helping the kids with schoolwork and eating food and eating snacks and eating some more not a whole lot of going on (laughs) there's not a lot going on but this was the first week that our girls completed their online school they did and they teachers one of them was stupid it was you know what did not go off without some hitches because it was kind of rocky yeah i mean they're not online students so they're this is a new experience to them altogether it's a new experience for them it's a new experience for us it's probably a new experience for the teachers we have a senior in high school and we have a sophomore in high school and our senior she's basically done Yep, she's been done. Yeah. She's been done since she started senior year. <laughs> in her mind. Yeah, she's basically done. <laughs> Once she got accepted in the Grammy, she was done. But yeah, she really she was <laughs> like, Oh, what do I need to do this for? I'm going to college. But then for the sophomore, like this is a very critical year for her in her high school education. I was talking to my mom, who was a teacher, and she was just saying that her concern is that some students are gonna have a gap in their learning mm-hmm. from this experience and most teachers are not going to probably work to catch them up next year because you can't teach a whole half a semester of school you have to keep moving forward because you have these benchmarks you have to hit right so she was saying unfortunately there are some students that this is going to cause them to just fall further Further behind behind than where they already were and so i think that's something that i don't think a lot of people have really thought about here's the thing and i do give our administrators and the people that are over our school district just a little bit of grace because we are in times and situations that none of us have ever had to deal be- no, deal with before not since the 1918 flu 1919 flu or something yeah 19 early 1900s yeah. you know what that was almost like 100 years ago so this is the 100 year flu so in 100 years do you think that's well, I won't be well, around. I ain't gonna be here, be but I'm just saying. Forty-three years old. I I'm just. Yeah. I hope I'm long gone by then. I'm gonna be ancient, and people gonna be carrying me around on a pedestal. Hey, oh, okay, here we go. Because I'm be. I am the oldest man on the planet. One hundred and forty-three. I'm one hundred and forty-three years old. So when the next next virus comes through, I'll be like, just take me away, <laughs> Calgon. Take me away. It's been. I've been here too long. Seriously, but you know what? This is a little off topic from what we're talking about, but I wanted us to let our listeners know how old we are because people think that we're children. Oh, I'm 43. And I'm 42. You're not 43. Well, I mean, I will be in October. (laughs) If y'all want to know, my birthday is October 17th. So if you want to send me a gift, feel free. We are talking about the five love languages later. And while gifts aren't top of the list, I do like gifts. You like gifts. You definitely like gifts. He was born in 1977. I was born in 1978. So at this time, we are both the same age. I'm 42. My birthday is February 15th. So we are not children. Like people think we're like 25 or something well, like that. That makes me feel good because I, I mean, I, I do look good for my age. I'm not going to lie to you. You, I look, you great. look good. You look, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I do. <laughs> you look I real good. I don't need your words of affirmation. <laughs> I know. I know what I look. 
good. <laughs> you look good. But yeah. So I just wanted to clear the air that we are not children. Babies. That's no shade towards the young couples that are out here. No, that's getting it in. Yeah. No. I mean, I. you know what, though? The one thing I think the older I get, the more I realize is... There is something to say about age and experience. Oh, yes. That doesn't mean that everybody that has aged has matured. learned and matured from those experiences. But you do have more life experiences the longer you live. So to me, especially when we're talking about marriage, I'm not going to sit here and tell somebody that's been married for 50 years. They don't know something when they tell me something because, well, they've lived this marriage thing a few decades longer than I've been alive. So. I just feel like there's opportunity to learn from everybody. Yeah. So just because you have been married 50 years doesn't mean there's nothing to learn from us who have been married for almost 19 or from somebody who's only been married for two because yep. times have changed. Yes. Times have changed. The way people are meeting each other has changed. The way people are holding their marriages together has changed. Mm -hmm. So I, I think experience has a little bit to do with it. Right. But I also feel like people should be open-minded enough to be able to receive and look at every opportunity as a classroom. Well, definitely, because I would even say that the things people are facing in their marriages have changed. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, you know, can't nobody that's on this earth right now say they've ever dealt with a pandemic right. before <laughs> right? and been stuck in a house like this before. Right. So to me, that's something that people that have been married for two years, two months, two days are dealing with that someone that has been married for 50, 60, 70 years is dealing with as well. Mm -hmm. So they don't know what that looks like or how to handle it or what's right look like or what's wrong look like. So to me, I agree. I think that that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Do we want to tell them about our doing our live? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, every week we'd be having announcements now. <laughs> What we got to do, like what they do at church at the end. We have any announcements or is that like in the middle of the service That's in or whatever? The special announcements. Yeah, we got some special announcements. We are going to start doing a live video chat. Yeah. Starting tomorrow. I'm lying. No, starting today. Oh, so same day? Yeah. It's not the next day? No. Oh, wait a minute, y'all. So t today at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Denver Mountain Standard Time. You can tune in to our Facebook page, and that's facebook.com slash Naked Proverbs. And at there you are going to find us live answering questions, talking about today's podcast, and just really connecting on a different level with you. Hope to see y'all there. If you have never heard what the five love languages are, I'm going to read them off real quick. Okay. Okay. So you have uh, words of affirmation, gifts or gift giving or gift receiving, I guess. Mm -hmm. Gifts. Gifts. Acts of service, quality time and physical touch. Those are the five love languages. Now, do you want to break those down more or we good? Not really. I mean, because it's been around since 1992. It's been. A, oh, that's a long time. It's a long. I mean, I, I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school. So if you have not heard about the five love languages, I don't know where you've been. Well, let's be clear. The five, In the Amazon. <laughs> somewhere. Like deep, deep off in the Somewhere Amazon. were you off the grid. <laughs> yes. Well, I first learned of the five love languages at church. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it is a Christian based, biblical based book that was written, like you said, in 19 first published in 1992 by a pastor named Gary Chapman. Doctor. Oh, doc, pastor, doctor or doctor, pastor. I don't know. I just doctor. Doctor. I want to get it right. Give you all your credentials. Pastor, doctor, Gary Chapman in 1992. And that is probably the reason why I first learned about it in church. Well, I had no reason to ever learn about the five love languages because it's really based around marriage. So for me, I wasn't like I was reading the five love languages so I could be a better boyfriend. No, this so is I why just, we were I mean, married when I found out. No, about but it. I'm just saying prior to oh, us finding out about it, like yeah. I, I was a kid. Yeah. So I had no reason to even care about five love languages. So I think that for me, that's why I didn't initially know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I just didn't know because I didn't care to know. I don't want what I'm about to say to uh -oh. make it seem like I'm bashing or hating on 
Dr. Pastor Gary Chapman and his My best five. friend is black. <laughs> what you about to say? <laughs> My father-in-law is a pastor. My husband's a pastor. And I've said it before in our podcast that I'm not a fan of the five love languages. And I don't remember if I read the book or not, but I'm definitely very familiar with the five love languages. And even before we started this podcast, we took the online quiz for the five love languages. And the whole time I'm sitting here like, this is just dumb. Like, I don't understand how I can categorize myself as one thing all the time well i mean i think that that is one of the dilemmas with the five love languages is it tries to put everybody into a box mm -hmm. and even when you read it because i do remember we actually had like a whole bible study read? based around I... the five love languages okay and we actually had people sitting in this living room right here on the five love languages? yes on the five love languages anyway the five love languages, to me, that's probably its biggest issue is while it basically says that everybody falls into one of these five categories and one is going to be your predominant language. And I don't think that's always true. I think that like because when, when you did the quiz, you had multiple that were almost identical, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that it's like anything else in life as you age things change oh yeah so 20 years ago when i if i would have taken this quiz if i took this quiz i don't know i doubt it but if i would have i would have been all about gifts because oh, yeah. i like gifts you do but today when i took it even when you took it for me and i took it for myself mm -hmm. it was on the list but it wasn't top of the list i was shocked at your results mm -hmm. and i was it at the bottom of my list so what we did both of our lists so yes. what we did tell, tell, tell the people okay. now tell the people tell because the people y'all might be did. a little confused people let me tell you what we this did this is what we did so we took the five love languages quiz on our own yes from our own perspective like me nick what is my love language? How would I answer these questions? Right. And then we took it a step further and we took it through the lens of how do I see my partner? How do I see Rich right. in, while I'm answering these questions? And then we compared our answers. And when I started to do it by myself, I said it, I'm like, I'm not this all the time. Like it's a different situation. You cannot love me like this today and expect that you're going to love me like this same way tomorrow. And I'm going to respond the same way. At the end of the day, what my wife is saying is she's complicated y'all. I am. And I think that we make jokes about women being hard to please and hard, you know, they're overly wait, complicated. Wait, think about what you're saying. Uh, I'm not done. Okay. And reality is I don't think that that's really the truth. What I think is is more of we all have different needs at different times and our needs change even our love languages change based on those needs so i think that's more of what this test this quiz showed for me was that my wife is not hard to love it's just that it's not like love is not something you should think well i know how to add one plus one so it's always gonna be exactly. two exactly it's love like you need it different ways at different times. If I've had a hard day and I've been just kicked and persecuted and I'm just feeling horrible. You need some words of affirmation. I might need some some words of affirmation that really lift up my you don't spirit. Want a gift. I don't need no gift. <laughs> I don't need my wife bringing me home some flowers. Tell my here, baby, here's some flowers. Yeah. They smell good. They look pretty. Like that's not what I need right then. That's the bigger picture is that everybody's love language can change depending on what their needs are and the situation yeah what they're doing the time of day i am just a strong believer in you cannot fit how to love someone into five buckets and think that is the only way that they need to be loved i do think however that the five love languages is a great foundation it's like the marriage starter kit right mm -hmm. or the dating starter kit the fiance starter kit because by the time you get married you should know a little bit about, hopefully you know a little bit about right. this person. So it's like the starter kit. It's a great foundation. It's a great way to get conversations going, but it can't be the be all end all no. of how your partner communicates and how they need to be loved. That's what happens so often. People want a simple solution to life, right? What is the right recipe to make meatloaf? What is the right recipe to have the perfect marriage? 
what is the perfect way to speak to my spouse in a way that they feel loved? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this book came out in 1992. Mm -hmm. There is no scientific evidence behind the five love languages. We always try to do our research before we get on here and start talking. And one of the things I found out is that there was a psychotherapist so who's trained at so something that's, like this. That's, you know, somebody that's a doctor as well, mm-hmm. who basically was like, look, I'm not knocking the five love languages. She actually uses them in her counseling. She stated that, you know, eight out of 10 times when a couple comes in and they have issues, she's like, I can usually eight out of 10 times. So 80% of the times it's got something to do with it's rooted and grounded in those fundamental misalignments of how they give and receive love. Mm -hmm. So that's basically saying that 80% of the time it has something to do with, quote unquote, the love languages. Right. But what she also said was understand that this was not rooted in any kind of clinical research. Mm -mm. And it was really out of popularity that it grew to be this like number one best selling book. I mean, the guy's been on Oprah. I mean, he's, you know, done all kind of things. And because of the popularity of it. It's just become this, this is how it's supposed to be. This is not the blueprint on how to love your spouse. I think that's my biggest thing. So many people rely on this, like, well, what's their love language? Well, it depends on the day. It depends on the time. It is important to understand and know what makes your partner tick. And it's also very important to know how to connect with your partner. Again, it's a great beginner's guide, right? But Mm -hmm. if you are hungry for more and your partner is going to be hungry for more. Like Rich said, he 20 years ago or when we got married, his love language, number one, would have probably been gift. You still like to receive gifts. Yeah, I like to receive that. I mean, gifts. You're right. I like gifts. I'm sorry. I was was about to start talking about physical touch. But that's what your number one is now. And I would probably argue that physical touch was your number one back then also. That's kind of what I mean when I say things change, right? Almost 20 years ago. I mean, it was over 20 years ago when we met. When we met, yeah. I was 18 years old. I didn't know the first thing about love of myself Mm. or of someone else right i didn't know there was so many missing gaps you were a child and over these years i've learned to understand on a deeper level what love is Mm. and what love is not right and so because of that there are things that i would say years ago would have been top of the list that today I'm like, okay, you know, if you give me a gift, that's great. I like gifts, You do, but do I love gifts? No, like there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And as a child though, when I received something from my parents, I grew up poor. I've said that before. We grew up poor. So when my parents did something for me, I knew that they were showing me their, like they had sacrificed to give me this. They had gone without to give me this. Like today, my kids, come in here and ask for anything and they know that we're going to make it happen. So gift giving is not a big thing around here because mm-hmm. we have. Yeah. But for me as a child, that was a huge show of love because we didn't have to give. I think that's a very important point that you're bringing up is how does the way that a person was raised impact their love language as an adult? Very much so. And because these five love languages aren't rooted in any type of scientific or clinical research, I think it would be a great study for someone who's working on their Ph.D. or, you know, doing some of this work in college right now who needs a topic for their dissertation or whatever it Mm -hmm. is that you have to do when you get your your Ph.D. Um, Dissertation. Dissertation. Mm -hmm. How does that impact your love language as an adult? If you look at someone that maybe was abused as a child, Mm -hmm. maybe they don't like physical touch. That's right. Maybe they're one of those people or maybe someone that was raped or sexually abused. Physical touch may be something that there's no way that will ever be something that That they they see love in. Right. Because they have these demons that they are dealing with on a regular basis. So physical touch may be something that is just foreign to them Mm -hmm. because they've never actually had a physical touch that was something in a loving manner yeah for Um, an expression of love right Mm -hmm. but like for me i think you know when i look at these words of affirmation acts of service quality time physical touch receiving gifts physical touch a hug a kiss a handshake a high five that's free 
So my family, that was not something that we didn't do. You know, I mean, my dad still gives me a hug, you know, or a handshake or, you know, pull me in and give me one of them little quick dap hug, you know, the man hug. Quality time. I mean, I grew up playing games and things with my family. Mm -hmm. So those were things that were the norm. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't special. It wasn't special. It was just something that was almost like I said, my kids just expect certain things. Mm -hmm. That was kind of what I expected. But then receiving gifts, on the other hand, like I said earlier, was something that was that was like, whoa, right. somebody went out of their way to do this for me that I know we didn't have it. Mm-hmm. But now I like physical touch. I like quality time. Yeah. It can change. One thing that's missing, and this is tying back to your love language being developed or rooted in how you were raised as a child, but understanding your partner's triggers and traumas, whether mm-hmm. it's rooted in childhood or or something that happened in their adulthood or not, I think that's a love language. I think Mm -hmm. that's a strong love language. More than anything, couples should study their partners from a selfless place, a selfless, I'm gonna say it again, selfless place, not selfish place. What I mean by that is it's not from a place where you're looking through a lens of what's in it for me or Mm -hmm. what about me, but you're looking at it from a place that puts your partner first. A lot of times in marriage, we forget about that. We forget that we have to die to ourselves Mm -hmm. every day so that our marriage can survive. Like marriage is not about me like this marriage is not about me this marriage is about him and my role and how i can be the best wife and partner for him that's the key when you talk about love love is selfless love is not self-serving love is not about yourself it is about giving all of you with no expectation of getting anything in return Mm -hmm. because there are certain people that do things with the expectation of well i did this so you need to do this or i did that so you need like even this in love languages i shouldn't try to learn my spouse's love language with the expectation that they're going to learn mine Mm -hmm. i shouldn't be in this well i'm going to learn her love language so i can manipulate her right so that i can get something out of her or if i start to give her more quality time then i'll start to get more sex like this isn't about tit for tat or if i do this then i get this love languages i mean and just love in general should be selfless it should be selfless but we have to understand and we cannot ignore the fact that human beings we are selfish people from the day that we're born into this earth so yes wait what i said i wasn't yes you were and you're i mean we're all still very selfish i am such a selfless person You are just being contrary right now. And I'm not, I am not even about to take the bait. (laughs) You are not speaking in my love language. I'm not about to take the bait. We are selfish people. So there's a lot of habits and character traits and things we've been taught all our lives that we have to unlearn if we really want to operate in love. If we really want to show our partner love, we have to do a lot of unlearning and people don't like to unlearn things people Mm -hmm. don't like to hold themselves accountable and they certainly don't like to be told what to do and it takes all of those things in order to really love somebody that's another one of those sticking points on the love languages is it requires self-accountability oh yes and most people don't have self-accountability because it's impossible to love someone in their language if it's not your dominant language or not your primary language unless you're willing to be self-accountable and even admit that you know what i don't know anything about words of affirmation let me learn how to affirm my wife with Mm -hmm. my words let me actually dig deep into this and understand what that means Mm -hmm. so if i'm not self-accountable then it's easy for me to just say well that's not my love language she needs to get on the same page as me right but then that's not coming from a selfless place right in love in marriage in life people just need to learn how to get comfortable being uncomfortable you will never grow if you don't know how to be uncomfortable Mm -hmm. if you don't want to experience discomfort 
Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Naked Proverbs podcast. We want you to truly have a happy marriage. We want you to continue to thrive in your marriages and indulge in your spouses on a regular basis. Don't forget to follow the Naked Proverbs on whatever podcasting you are listening on. And we will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace.